Alright, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lady Nika, and with tonight's episode of Love and Hip Hop at uh, uh, yeah, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Um, child, let me get my notes. Cause some of the shit are gonna come off the dome, but some of it ain't. Oh, child, having issues. Y'all see how that issue starting right there? But anyway, it's all good. Oh, uh, this episode two of. Season 6 entitled Family Matters. Now, before I begin the review, I want to do um, a small disclaimer. When I do these reviews for y'all, y'all do know. I don't know these motherfucking people, right? I don't know nobody associated with them or nothing. These are just my opinions based off what they present. And my opinion and your opinion might not match. And that's okay. That's okay if it don't match. It's it's cool with me. You know, sometimes y'all have made me look at it in a different perspective. And I've been able to say, you know what? They might do got a point. But for the most part, what I say is what I mean and that's it. I tell y'all, every year at the beginning of the Real Housewives of Atlanta, we're not going to be all up in our feelings. We're not going to act a fool. We're not going to be disrespectful to one another. And time and time again, I've been watching my comments, and it do borderline disrespect sometimes. But I see y'all able to pull it back, and I appreciate that. But if I don't agree, if we say I say something in the review, and you don't agree with that, and you put that down in the comment. Sometimes I'll come back because I don't want to. I don't want you to think I'm ignoring you, and I'll say something else again. There's no reason to write me paragraphs about people I don't know. I don't know them people. That's just what I seen, my opinion, and on my channel, there is a policy that I implement on every video I make, and that is that we will agree to disagree. If I don't say what you want me to say, I'm sorry. I may not see it the way you see it, but it's okay. And you're welcome to put your thoughts down in the comment section called That's What the Fuck the Panic Section For. You go down in the panic, you have your conversation. I talk back with you because I'm respectful, and that's what we do. That's it. If we don't agree, that's fine. We don't have to fucking agree, child. But... Stop getting all in your feelings about folks you don't know. And stop getting in your feelings if, some, if I don't agree with what you're saying. Because you can't make me see your side no more than I can make you see mine. We agree to disagree. Also, don't try to bring my... Let me tell you something. Go in my archives. Look at my videos. Not one video have I made have I taken down. Why? Why should I? My ups and my downs are on my channel. You type my name into the search bar on YouTube and I'll tell you what you're going to hear. You're going to hear some good shit, then you're going to hear some bad shit. But I don't remove any videos because if I said it, I stand firm in my word while I walk and I talk. And it is what it is. You can't come back on me about an opinion and try to bring something that you deem to be negative into my presence. You can't judge me by last year because I don't live there no more. This shit happened. It was what it was, and I moved on. Now, if you want to keep staying there, you can. But don't think that you bathe me or shake me when you mention stuff like that in my comment section because I don't give a fuck about this situation or the people involved anymore. And I never removed the video, so it's still there. And I never flagged nobody videos. I ain't fuck with nobody. I think I fuck with one person. And, hell... The fool re-uploaded the shit and I didn't come for his throat and I could have. I could stop the whole lot. I chose not to because it ain't, man, let that shit go. Come on now. Stop trying to bring me down with the bullshit because if you haven't figured anything else out about me, you ought to know one thing. I'm a tough bird and bitch, you will not get rid of me. I will leave on my own, but it won't be at your fucking, uh, you know, by your words. I don't give a damn what y'all think about me. You either like me or you love me. And that's what we're going to be with this. So, find a new method to try to hurt me. Because what people have said about me down on YouTube is their right to their opinions. And I'm cool with it. I don't give a shit. Anyway, 
Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 6, Episode 2, Family Matters, honey. We started off right back where we left off. Remember, we had the slow motions of Jocelyn and Stevie J coming to see each other, meet up and talk, right? Jocelyn says she never thought that her baby daddy wouldn't be there uh, through her pregnancy, assuming, uh, in a, through her pregnancy and assuming that the baby could possibly be somebody else's when she went uh stevie should know better now let's pause and go back in time if we shall to ig post after ig post you tore that man down jocelyn mm -hmm. you tore him down you even accused him of molesting little evil now y'all she even had somebody go along with the fucking bullshit at one point in time saying that he messed with his daughter. Now, it's a lot of things that can be said about Stevie J, and I might believe a whole lot of them, but bitch Stevie and Kitty Puss, I don't believe. No, ma'am, Miss Thing, we know it takes some grown women a minute to adjust to the size that Stevie doing, working with. Ain't no way in hell he messed with his child. So, considering that you did all of that, that's why he been away. It's justifiable, Jocelyn. If you tearing my character down and trying to make me look like I'm gay and I'm a molester and all that, I'm not going to be wanting to be a front of you, bitch. What's wrong with you? Girl, whatever. He told her that she disrespected him by taking them pics with other men. And that she slandered him. And he was right. She said that uh, he denied paternity. And he asked her when and where. She goes on talking about she gonna move back to L. I mean, back to uh Miami. And he told her, uh, if that baby mine know the hell, you will not be going back to no Miami. And in the end, basically, he's just rubbing on her belly and saying that you know he gonna do for this baby is just like he do for the rest of them, and that's the fact. I said, okay, then Stevie, do your thing, child. All right, let's go over here to this trollop named Jasmine, child. She got confessional time. She a main cast, mate. Girl, Mona, you gonna stop. But anyway, she in there talking to Rodney. We finally see Rodney, and he less than. He ain't nothing like what I thought he would look like, but okay. And he there taking care of Kirk's alleged child. And she telling him what went down at the party. And we learned that they actually had an arrangement. He would get her money, but she keep it on the low, right? Well, she didn't keep it on the low. She said she slipped up and... You know, let it out, and now, you know, <sighs> she don't know what's going to happen from here. And one thing we can figure out from this situation, Rodney was quiet because Rodney benefited from this shit, okay? Now, she's saying Kurt claiming he don't know her or the baby. And Rodney talking about where it's high, the world about to see how dirty he is. And what what got me was Rodney was in jail for just a few months when she done cheated and had a whole child on him. Child kind of, mm, 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 mm. I don't know, girl. I don't know. Next, we see Tommy. She pissed off because apparently she done been calling and ain't nobody answered the phone, not even her damn mama who is up in her house. So she had to burn herself out and her and the bell buns come now. And she, her and her mama basically is getting into it. Baby, when I tell you, whew, I was like, wow, no wonder this girl kind of like how she is. Now, pause. <laughs> Y'all ain't find it strange. This bitch had a bell. Well, I can't much. I can't read this bitch about no bell bomb because I just I took mine off retainer last year. But girl, it says a lot when you gotta keep one on retainer. I just I, I decided it was time to stop acting a damn fool, so I wasn't doing it no damn more. Now we learned that Mama didn't take care of Tommy. She was from foster home to foster home until at age fifteen she was on her own. Her and her mama arguing back and forth, and the mama said to the bells bombing that he need to take her ass back. Uh, mama, you in her house. Child, ratchet on fleek. Mama, you need to leave. Okay. 
Child, they was going at each other back and forth. I'm talking about them bitches. They was sweet. They was slanging them bitches at each other. Like, you would have thought them was two hoes on the street. You would have never thought that if you had seen this and not known this was her mama, that they would talk to each other like that. I be damned. Well, I raised mine, so that may have a whole lot to do with it. But it'll be a cold day in hell before I would be cool and let one of mine call me a bitch. I promise to God. God gave him to me. I'm going to give him back to you that day that they called me out my damn name. Child, whatever. And did y'all know the security was on on in that house on deck waiting? Because they know how Tommy get down. I said, Lord, Mona, you knew, didn't you, girl? Now, Jonathan, she meet up with uh, Melissa and, you know, girl chit-chat, girl chit-chat. And she say Stevie called her over there to the house. They ain't have sex and she ain't kiss on him or nothing, but uh, she did sleep over there. And while she was there, she done swiped this man's drawers. And she want Melissa to go with her down there to the center so she can get some DA t DNA testing done. The man already agreed. Okay. I ain't finna go there. Then we see... One of my faves, Child Mama D. Old ass motherfucker, but she look good. You hear me? I love that short look on her, that short cut on her and stuff. And her body, you know, she keeping her body up. I love Mama D, even though she on that fuck shit a whole lot. I'm entertained, so she do her performance and then she go talk to Ernest. Mama D got a problem. See, the problem is my, uh, Ernest is a little bit too close to his mama. Still at his age, okay? And Mama D feeling some kind of way about it. She say she should be his first. Uh-huh. She should be his. She should come first according to her and according to the Holy Bible. Now, she ain't say the Holy Bible, but, you know, in the Bible that is, you're supposed to cling to. Okay, well, anyway. She doesn't, uh... She said his mama can't do what she can do. And if she can, maybe they need to have a third threesome. And I was totally fucking disturbed and disgusted just like Ernest was. He said that's one of the most disturbing things that she ever said, and I agree. Mama D, you need your ass some time out for that one or dick out or something. Mama D, no. Whew. But Ernest wound up telling her that Mama finna move up here to Atlanta. And Mama D wasn't feeling that shit at all. Now let's go over to call, uh, Cougar Puss calling. Cause she want more tea. She ain't got enough information. The night at the party she got a little bit. But she got to crack this bitch. She got to find out who she is. So she meeting up with Jasmine. While Rodney, who we find out helped Jock in the beginning of his career. <laughs> his rap career. Get on. They meeting up as well. Now, let's talk about two different conversations going on. In one conversation, which is Carly and Jasmine, Carly wants to know how it all started. So Jasmine say, look, Kirk met me at the strip club. I was a dancer, and he liked how I dance, honey. And then she uh, she told him straight up from the beginning, I got a boyfriend. So he said, so what? I got a wife. We can keep it on the down low. Download y'all want smoke, but she didn't keep it there for you. So they started hanging out. Some of the friends and some of his family members have been around her, and he's even bought baby Carter. Hmm. Carly like a big bird who who found a whole bunch of fucking worms because she was just too ecstatic to get that tea. She can't believe it, but she says she need proof. Jasmine say, well, I got text messages. Carly was like, that's good because I know his number. She said, girl, you don't know this number because Kurt got a whole different phone that Rashida don't know nothing about. Jasmine says she driving around in the car that he bought and showed her the insurance paper with Kurt's name on it. And then Carly was like, damn. Kirk pay her bills, okay? She showed him a video also of Kirk and little baby Kenny, and she was in that video saying, say hi to daddy, and he wasn't, he wasn't, you know, saying that I ain't the daddy or nothing like that. He was letting it flow, so child baby Carla could barely compose herself. She had so much. Now, let's flip over to the other side of the conversation. Rodney and Jock is talking, and pretty much... Jasmine conversation matches Rodney's, okay? She told Rodney she got pregnant for Kurt, but Kurt takes care of her. He moved her into an apartment up under him and Rashida, and he had video proof that, you know, Kirk has been in that apartment with that baby. Now, Jock was trying to 
find a way to not believe it and dispel it. He was saying that, you know, they could have taken another Kurt's uh, picture, a headshot of him, and superimposed it on, a, on that person in the video's body. But I'm like, man, come on now. Do Rodney even look like he got that kind of technology sense? Hell no. Let it go, baby. Let it go. He guilty. <sighs> Even Jock didn't believe his own shit, and Rodney looked like he too dumb to ever have concepted the even conceived the idea like that. Now Carl over there telling Jasmine Rodney is a scam artist and how he did Mimi, but she say, "Look, this ain't got nothing to do with this type of situation, with this particular situation right here." Okay, Mama D need retail therapy. Yes, she do. She need retail therapy and to talk to her son to deal with Ernest and his mama situation. Now, as he's listening, he finds it kind of funny because Mama D is the one that usually always in other people's relationship, but now somebody doing it to her is pissing her off. She said, well, I ain't been in you and Bam business. He said, no, you haven't, but since you mentioned the Bam, I might as well go on and tell you it might not be a wedding mama. Uh, I've been in a hotel for the last few days and I haven't heard from her. He says that they've been arguing a lot lately over nothing. She gets petty and he's stubborn so he don't feel that they need to get married at this time right here. Okay? Then child is switched to a scene. We find out oh, KK to managed to jump our ass up in here for season six. KK and that dog, baby. KK meet up with damn uh Tommy. And she talking about her and her mom's argument and how she ain't seen her mama since she pulled her out. And But she pretty sure mama will be sliding on through soon as she needs something. KK was explaining that her and her mom is now on two different plateaus. And that Tommy is trying to do better. Meanwhile, her mama still on that fuck shit. She tell her that she needs to calm it down. Show some compassion and have patience for when her mama finally do make that change. She said, I don't need you going to jail because Tommy told my she I'm over to jail. She said, I don't need you going to jail because I can't visit you. I don't even visit my own kid. That shit too painful. Now, Tommy tell us her and Scrap are no longer together, but she's dating. And KK say, as you should. But Tommy say she got something for that cougar puss, talk Carly. She tried it. KK say, well, Carly was never your friend from the beginning. So, you know, do what you got to do without going to jail. Okay? Now, Stevie come home, and he sees suitcases and shit, and he wanted his Jocelyn to move back up in this piece until he seen his boots, and then he realized that's his daughter, Savannah. Savannah from Philly, who is 18 years old in her last year of school, wishes to finish her school year out in Atlanta online. Um, Stevie says she 18, she can make her own decisions, but he's going to talk to the mom, but first she's going to have to uh, calm some of them damn activities that she do. She's going to have to bring it all the way down to live under his roof. Now, Mama D, she done planned this family dinner. Uh, she's flown Ernest's mama up from Palm, from somewhere, I think Palm Springs. I'm not certain, y'all. And Scrappy show up without Bam, and they ask him where she at, and he say they been going through some things. She won't be there, but he looks sad. Uh, Ernest asking him, is he good? And Mama D saying that, you know, I'm here for you. Just let me know what you need, because I don't want to overstep my boundaries. And she looked right over there at Ernest's mama. I screamed. I said, girl, you stayed in Scrappy business until you got married. Well, you really, this is the first season we ain't seen you not in his business. You've been on his, in his business since the conception of this show. So, girl, what is you talking about? But, okay, that shit ain't cute when it come back on you, is it? Mama D say, Ernest, tell his mama everything that goes on between them. And Mama Ernest say, no, he don't. Mama D say, yes, he does, because I was ear hustling one time. And I heard you say that you don't like the fact that Ernest is with D. Now, that was wrong. You shouldn't tell him that. But see, Mama Ernest got a little gangster in her, and she bought that life still, too. She told her, you don't tell me how to talk to my son. Well, Mama D was caught off guard because Mama Ernest ain't fucking backing down, neither. So she said she had a gift. Now, <laughs> scrap it, tell us now, man, look. Y'all know when my mama go to pull out gifts at the dinner table, she about to go left, and it did. Mama D gave them motherfuckers a pacifier, a diaper, and a onesie, and say she done with the bullshit, deuces. <laughs> now, 
Rashida said with all the rumors flying around town, she been focused on just her business and taking care of her kids. She ain't really felt like talking to no damn about it, but she went ahead on and accepted a call from uh, Carly, so she gonna meet up and see what she got to say. Because she know Carly was there. So Carly get there and she telling her, you know, I heard about, I know you heard about the party, but I met with the girl. And at first, Rashida was like, hold up, but let me see what this hoe going to say. Because she felt like Carly was out of order by meeting up with the girl. Carly claimed she didn't want to tell Rashida that, but here it is. She a stripper. They had sex. She had his child. He moved her right underneath you, girl. She stayed right up under y'all. Mm -hmm. um, she's met some of the friends and family. She's even held your child, Carly. And finally, I saw a video of him in her apartment holding that baby while she's saying, say hi to daddy, and he is playing with the baby in the video. Mm. Carla said she ain't want to, uh, she don't even know what to say, but she thought at first the girl was on some scam artist shit, on some scam artist shit, but now she don't really know what the fuck to think. Rashida, Rashida, she broke down. I've been married 17 years. You go through some shit. But who would make all this shit up, Carly? And Carly was faking tears. Boy, she was she was trying her best to put on her big acting chops <coughs> for Rashida. I said, Lord. So later on, we see the final scene of the night, which is Rashida up in that apartment acting like she cooking for Kurt. And he come in talking about it smelling good. She said, uh-huh, but we need to talk now. She starts off with, you told me you didn't know her, but Carly met up with her and she's got evidence. Now, what you got to say? What's your explanation? And the shit cut off. Let me tell y'all something about how I feel about this shit right here. At first, when I first heard this story, I was like, it's utter bullshit. I don't believe none of this shit. Okay? Now, as we are pussy popping on into the season, we on episode two now, I still feel like this is some bullshit. And the reason why I think it's some bullshit because... I know Rashida must got some type of low self-esteem, as beautiful as she is. She must have some type of low self-esteem to even still be with this dude after how he act when she was pregnant with baby Carter. But what I really don't believe is that she would actually stay with this man because they still together right now. I can't see Rashida staying with this man and we go through the season, listen to this girl, take a DNA test, and it's deemed that that's Kirk's baby. If she's still with this dude, and he done had a whole nother child on her after taking her down, near down and through, through her own last pregnancy with their kid, that he had no, he it wasn't no doubt in his mind that Rashida was really pregnant for him. Now, he said that bullshit, but he fucking knew that Rashida ain't that type of girl. We all can pretty much tell that Rashida ain't that, she, she one of them loyal girls. Okay, so she, we knew she wasn't pregnant by somebody else. It was her baby. If she's still with this dude after going through this season, going through DNA, and we find that this may be hit, this is his baby, I'm going to have a problem with her motherfucking dad's, and bitch, I promise you, I'm going to read that whole fulfill. I'm going, I'm going I'm to hold in what I feel right now, because I got some shit, ooh, I got some shit. But I'm going to hold it in. We're going to play along. But I'm telling y'all, if this come out to be Kirk, baby, and I'm sitting here watching IG every day, and I see this bitch is still with this motherfucker and working hard to keep her store over there in Fifth Plaza up and running, I'm going to have something to say about that shit because that's fucking ridiculous. I know in a marriage you go through some ups and some downs. But, girl, how, when, your, when your bad times is out way in your good times, something wrong. And we can clearly see that... From this show alone, y'all always give us bullshit. Now, y'all make it seem like it's a bad thing. I don't know if he really the way that he's portrayed on this show, but girl, please. I just don't believe it. I'm sorry. I don't believe it. I think we going through this bullshit and going to find out this man ain't did a motherfucking thing and that this man is still married to this. I mean, still, this ain't none of his baby. But if it turn out to be his baby, and I know for a fact when she's still smiling and looking up in this man's face, oh, baby. Now, my words ain't going to mean nothing, but it sure going to feel good to go on and finally say what the fuck I'm feeling because I'm sure feeling some kind of way. But that's it. That's all, y'all. 
The depth of your struggle will determine the height of your success. In the meantime, in between time, please remember to like the video, comment down below in the panic section respectfully, and share this on your social media um, platforms. And I'll see you guys back tomorrow for the, I think it's the mid-finale of Have and Have Nots. Peace. Good night.